Hey everybody! As you can immediately see, today we're doing something very weird. Uh, Ali Antrazi played this deck to the first place finish at the SCG Standard Classic last weekend. And a funny thing is that I actually have more experience with this deck than a lot of people because I played against Ali round 9 of the released weekend open. So the very first day that you were allowed to play these cards, Ali was already playing this Lich's Mastery combo deck, and I got to see it in action. I got very lucky to beat him, because this deck destroys mid-range decks. The type of dirtily green-black thing I was doing is exactly what he wanted to play against, and it was only a few lucky draws that got me out of it. So, if you don't know how this deck works, first we need to explain the card Lich's Mastery. You can't lose the game... And whenever you gain life, you draw that many cards, and whenever you lose life, you essentially have to get rid of cards in your graveyard, permanents, or cards from your hand. In one way, this just sort of gives you a big extra life total, because you can fill up your graveyard really fast with things like Discovery, and that becomes a second health pool effectively. And it's also a card draw engine, because things like Gift of Paradise suddenly have draw three cards attached to their text box. The real thing, though, is that you can't lose the game. So, if you play a Chance of Glory, that last part of the text box doesn't apply. This is just three mana, take an extra turn. So, what you're trying to assemble is a set, effectively an infinite loop. The Mirari Conjecture, the first part gets an instant back. So, we get back Chance for Glory. Then the second part gets back a Sorcery. Once we assemble the whole loop, what we'll be getting back is Nature's Spiral. Then finally, the third part doubles instants and sorceries. So we can do something like cast Nature's Spiral, getting back multiple Mirari Conjectures, and also recast our Chance for Glory, taking multiple extra turns. It's really complicated, and one thing you might notice is this deck basically doesn't have any win conditions in the main. We have Expansion, Explosion, but... It's not like our deck is set up to actually make 20-something mana. You can do it with uh, the Mari Conjecture doubling it, but you still need 14 mana to explosion someone. So when we win, it will usually be off of Mastermind's Acquisition, the Diabolic Tutor that is also a wish, to get one of our win conditions out of our sideboard. And here we've got basically whatever you could want. Three Carnage Tyrant, a Bane Fire against control decks, Lyra Dawnbringer, all sorts of stuff. So, actually winning the game with this deck is quite difficult, but you've got a good control shell with things like Cleansing Nova and Settle, so you are reasonably good at keeping people off of you. This deck is interesting. It has very polarized matchups. Against something like the green-black midrange deck that's really popular right now, it's very easy to win. They can't kill you fast enough, and they can't interact with your combo. But against really fast aggro decks or control decks with a lot of counter spells, it can seem impossible to win. You need to stick this card or your deck is just very bad. It basically does nothing at all. I think that's the only notes that I can give without actually seeing the games. So I guess we'll go ahead and get right into it. Alright, getting into it now. This deck is really fascinating from a deck building perspective because it has so many moving parts uh, i think i keep this uh this doesn't really do anything but we've got like good mana ramp and a card advantage card notably both halves of the mirari conjecture can get back uh can get back discovery dispersal because discovery is a sorcery but dispersal is an instant so this can just buy that back a couple times, and often that's just enough of an advantage. Opponent playing a Plains. Hopefully... Okay, Black-White. Okay, Black-White Knights. This deck is apparently determined to follow me around. Go ahead. Casting Gift of Paradise specifically... Hmm, this Sorry, this was wrong. I should have cast it on this Hinterland Harbor. You want to cast it on a non-black land to guarantee triple black for Lich's Mastery, and you also want to cast it on a non-white, non-red land, because one of this deck's problems is casting uh, the Chance for Glory, Hour for Glory, whatever it's called, because uh, 
you don't have that many red or white sources, and so gift alongside a red or white source can cast the card. It doesn't matter because I've got Dragon Skull Summit, but uh, something to keep in mind. So here we have an awkward setup where I, I can't hit double red and double blue, even if by playing the Dragon Skull Summit. I'm going to play it anyway, yeah. Because now a red or a blue land will enable casting this. I think we're probably just going to die. One problem that I've had, which is just a me thing, I don't mulligan enough with this deck. I hate mulliganing and all your hands just look like this, like cobbled together nonsense, basically. And so that makes me not want to mulligan because, like, a six card hand is going to be the same thing but with less cards in it. But, like, you really need some sort of interaction, so I probably should have mulliganed to find something like that. Hopefully we can just find a Settle the Wreckage and we'll be good. Nope. Okay. Even with a Gift of Paradise, we can't live, so we are dead. Oh boy. Yeah, that's my fault, basically. I should have mulliganed for some interaction, but we didn't know that opponent was going to play an aggro deck, so... I don't super love that plan anyway. So, going to sideboard. Uh, I don't know that we're actually going to sideboard here. The one card that's very good in the matchup that we'd want to bring in is Deafening Clarion, but you want to leave a sweeper in the sideboard for Mastermind's Acquisition. It's possible I'm supposed to bring in the Thief of Sanities, but I think that's part of a larger bring in threats package when the opponent is likely to be able to remove Lich's Mastery or just counter our stuff. So I think I'm actually just going to run the main deck back, despite how badly we just got smashed. I think if you knew what the opponent was playing every single game before you started with this deck, it would just be such a ridiculous advantage. Uh, this hand's fine because we can look for our Clarion and cast it with our Gift of Paradise. Or, we can't actually cast Clarion with this hand, but finding a red or a white source shouldn't be that hard. Like that. Sweet. Again, this time I'm going to cast or play Hinterland Harbor, and I will cast the Gift of Paradise on that. Oh. Well, that's even better. Gift of Paradise is so important in this deck. Like, the fact that it's double fixing, it's basically a filter land, but for every single color. Like, next turn we could just pass with Settle the Wreckage up, and if opponent attacks in... Okay. Probably not going to do that next turn, but... Hmm. So, I think we are casting Mastermind's Acquisition here. I think I'm going to go ahead... What do I get? I'm going to search my library. I don't think this is a Find a Graveyard card moment. But what card do I get? I think top... Candidates are the Marari Conjecture to buy back the Settle the Wreckage. Or possibly Lich's Mastery to get ready to start assembling our combo. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and get Lich's Mastery. That might be wrong, but we've got another acquisition in the bank and we already have our safety valve to keep ourselves alive. Notably, Lich's Mastery of Black Permanent will pump up this Knight of Grace. So, I think we're just going to go ahead and keep hitting land drops. Next turn... Hmm. Actually, now what I'm going to do, since we are very unlikely to die on this board, opponent's not interacting with us at all, I'm going to go ahead and keep grabbing combo pieces. Now I'll get the Mirari Conjecture. See what opponent does here. What we're probably going to end up... Uh, yeah, I didn't put myself dead. Woo! Just had to make sure. Oh. Well, now I'm dead. Okay. Ah, that was... I did the math, but then I'm like, wait. If opponent has hits a swamp, they could have just played a black permanent to kill us. But opponent didn't even need a swamp because they had a Johnny. Okay, so maybe I got greedy there. Probably should have held up settle. But 
Playing this deck is going to be a learning experience. <laughs> okay, getting into the second match. I promise that I have actually played 10 plus matches with this deck off camera. Uh, many of them just didn't go very well. <laughs> Alright, so we've already got a take extra turn card. We've got a life gain card and our mana works. Like, am I supposed to mulligan this? We just die if opponent's playing like mono red, but is our average 6 any better? Also kind of tired of losing these die rolls, but... Yeah, I'm gonna keep it. Whatever. Notably, Drowned Catacomb will enter tapped with our Sacred Foundry, but Chapel and Sun Petal Grove will not. Okay. Well, I wish opponent were playing an aggro deck with the Settle Draw, but... It is not the case. Who knows, they might be playing, like, the, the Blue Red Drakes or something like that. Okay, opponent does nothing. I am fine with that. We are... The control decks are tough. Yeah, probably the Drakes or the Phoenix deck. Yep. Enigma Drake, that's fine. Gives us a chance to resolve our Gift of Paradise here, which is cool. Problem is, opponent likely has counter spells for Settle the Wreckage, so it might be difficult to resolve this. Take a couple damage. Hmm. Probably actually should have played the Drowned Catacomb tapped. It's fine, because like we already have triple black, but... Huh. Opponent has something, they should have done it on their turn, gotten in for an extra point of damage with the Enigma Drake. I am going to go ahead and attempt to settle. We don't have any counters, so it's not like we can stop it anyway. And uh, if we can get rid of these, that'll buy us a lot of time. Okay. Now they need Spell Pierce to counter the Settle the Wreckage, so probably in a good spot. Target my opponent. Cool. Now, not only did we get rid of their two threats, they don't have... They can't even play anything the next turn, so... Would really love to draw a discovery here. Yes! That is exactly what I wanted. Sweet. This card is so good in this deck, both digging for what you need, and also... Uh, like I mentioned, the synergy with the Mari Conjecture, and also just filling up your graveyard. Being able to take a hit or two while Lich's Mastery is out is excellent. Huh. Is this good enough? We already have five, gonna go up to six. Next turn we can cast it for X equals seven, draw three cards. <laughs> Seems fine to me. If one isn't gonna do anything, we can wait even longer. Notably, this is also... I said we don't have any counters on our main deck, and that's sort of true. We don't have anything with counter-target spell, but this does effectively become negate it in a counter war. Because they counter your spell, you copy their counter, targeting theirs. Sure. This card is really good in this deck. Okay, Enigma Drake is going to kill us quickly, although not as quickly since Enigma Drake does not work with a... Uh... Hmm. So, if opponent has a two-mana counter like a Negate, they can cast it anyway. I don't know how many counters they might play anyway. This is a little different than the builds I've seen because of Enigma Drake. Like, I think they're just playing the Blue-Red Phoenix deck, but I don't know. So... Let's see, I already counted. I can go up to seven. I could expansion for three. The more greedy play is to... Uh, hmm. I could Marari Conjecture for Discovery, just continue looking for stuff. I could Gift of Paradise and attempt to expansion for five next turn, killing the Enigma Drake. That seems... awkward. I think I'm going to... Okay, I can count. 
cast this. I had to check. Target player, myself. Let's hope they don't have a counter. If they had a counter, we're pretty dead anyway, but... Okay. Well, those draws were not excellent, but that's fine. <laughs> Okay, our clay phoenix is fine. Opponent not even dealing that much damage here, honestly. Let's see if they have anything else. Nope. Okay. So, we can go ahead and play our land. We can Gift of Paradise this plains. This doesn't generate any mana this turn, but we didn't need the mana, and we're fixing our best land this way. And I'm just going to go ahead and attempt to Cleansing Nova. Sweep the board again. Opponent might be able to buy back the Phoenix, but that's a very slow clock when we're at 18. We need to avoid taking the big hits from the Enigma Drake. And I kind of like our spot here. We have Discovery, we have a Mirari Conjecture to grind card advantage. Even if they play a bunch of creatures, we can fight against that. Put it down to three cards in hand. I would guess it's just burn spells, like Lightning Strikes and stuff. They probably should have fired those off at us already, but... Can't imagine what else they have. Sweet. Hmm. So. Alright, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cast the Mirari Conjecture. See if opponent can counter this. If they don't, I'm actually going to get back Expansion. Because, like I said... This is effectively a counter spell during a counter war. Then I'm just going to pass the turn. And I'm, I'm about to bet everything on them not having two counters, since they've let things like this resolve a bunch. Opt, sure, that's fine. Because what you can do... This card's an instant, which is really weird, but it is. So, okay, go ahead, hit me for three, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and cast Chance for Glory. So, on your end step, I'm gonna queue up two turns. An extra turn, and then the turn I was owed anyway. Normally I wouldn't get to my second turn, unless, of course, I cast a spell that says I can't lose the game. Turn to instant sorcery, go ahead and get this. So, let's go ahead and play our land. Lich's Mastery. If they try to counter this, I can beat one counter. They would need two, which is basically impossible with what they have right now. Sick, they do not have it. Awesome. Now we're off to the races. Uh, that's a little irritating, but whatever. Okay, this is the main reason I didn't want to play this deck. This interface sucks. Like, because it minimizes your graveyard again every single time you pick a card. Awesome. So, let's go ahead and cast this. Two mana, draw four cards. Can't lose the game because I'm a lich. Until end of turn, our instants and sorceries are doubled. So let's actually just count how much mana we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We can't quite kill them with expansion. Hmm. That's a little unfortunate. I would have liked to do that. Alas. Let's draw a bunch of cards. Since we can't kill them this way, let's just draw a bunch of cards fine well then uh that's a really good <laughs> let's take a couple extra turns in a row oh my uh in case you haven't noticed yet i don't usually play this type of deck this isn't really my thing so if i make mistakes yeah i know i'm gonna make mistakes and that's just the way it is but i'm gonna try my best so is opponent the type of deck where we want to board in Carnage Tyrants? Just cut down on some of the random bits in our deck and add a bunch of big unkillable monsters? It seems fine to me. 
I think we will... Let's cut Cleansing Novas. Settle the Wreckage and Vraska's Contempt both line up better against the Phoenix. And also we'd like to nab more than one threat out of the opponent. An individual threat isn't that scary out of them most of the time. And I'll cut Divination just because... Honestly, I'm not entirely sure why this card is in the deck in the first place. Like, maybe just we can't play five Discoveries, but... I don't know. If anything, I think I'd rather... I guess you can't play, uh... You can't really play Notion Rain once Lich's Mastery is going. Eh, you sort of can. Just bin the cards and then exile them from the life loss, but... Anyway, I, I don't love Divination, so... Uh, okay. We can cast Contempt with this hand, and we're one white source off of Settle, so we're we're unlikely to die. Unfortunately, opponent probably boarded in a whole bunch of negates and stuff like that, so we might have a little bit harder time interacting with them this game. Last time it seemed like all of their interaction was mostly for creatures, and so as soon as we slowed down their clock, they couldn't really do a lot to stop us. That is the best draw card, as I mentioned, is so good in this deck. Opponent dirtling a bit, but that's what their deck does. Let's go ahead and play this untapped so we can Discovery. Uh, these both seem great, actually. Go ahead and resolve the Gift of Paradise next turn. The, the biggest thing I think you want to do with this deck is avoid dying. Okay. That's only their second spell this turn, though, right? Yeah, so they didn't get that back. We need to avoid dying, because basically we want to have all of our combo pieces in hand and a million mana in play, which is a tall order, but that's really what the deck needs to do. Okay, Drake, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and play Search for Azkanta. I don't think I'm settling next turn. I think we can afford to take a turn off, and this card will be very good for us. Hmm. Because of the way I cast things, I can't revitalize this turn, but them's the breaks. Hmm. Do we want that? Yeah, I think we need the lands. We're not particularly close to flipping Search, so that doesn't need to be a priority. I'm gonna go ahead and pass turn here. We only have six mana, so we can't Mirari and immediately Discovery again, which is sort of how you have to do it so that you have it in the graveyard again for the second part of Mirari. I'm going to attempt to fire off a Settle here. Not tapping like that. Oops. Yeah, Settle the Wreckage. I think opponent is likely to have counters, and so we need to try to start interacting with them whenever we can. Which unfortunately means we take a little bit of extra damage from uh, from them putting another instant or sorcery in their yard, but that's just the way it is. I think I want to keep the cards flowing. This will suck if we immediately draw a Lich's Mastery, but... Sure. So, let's go ahead and put our big nasty down, shall we? This stops opponent from attacking with Electromancer, puts a really fast clock into play on our side, and means that they need to fight over this while dealing with our giant monster. And that is very difficult for them to do. Next turn we can Mirari, get back, revitalize, cast that to just keep drawing cards and gaining life. Might not even have to try for one of these. Could wait until the following turn when we have 8 mana and can do both. This game's a little tenuous. If they just fire off a bunch of cantrips and get back this phoenix, we're going to die really quickly. But it looks like opponent has flooded out a bit, which happens when your deck is full of cantrips. Sometimes you can't avoid drawing all those lands. So let's go ahead. We do have 8 mana, so we could attempt to do both of these. Huh. 
Yeah, let's go ahead, get in. Because basically what we're going to do is we're going to settle, and even if they have a counter, then we can probably resolve Vraska's Contempt to take out the Enigma Drake. And then they're only hitting us for four, which really isn't anything, especially if we're re rebuying cards like this. And then they just won't be able to race our big dino. Opponent basically needs two counters here to be very in this game at all. Otherwise, we're going to run away with it pretty hard. That's a good card. Uh, and this still lets us cast Braska's Contempt afterwards, even if they have a counter. They got the Disdainful Stroke, that's fine. Gonna take seven here. Uh, we are winning the race on board. Go ahead and bin that, we don't need lands anymore. Draw one anyway, that's fine. Let's see, what's the best card we could get here? Okay, opponent packs it in. They weren't going to be able to grind through that. Yeah, so that's the two ways the deck can win. We got our com combo and ran off with it, and then we just cast a Carnage Tyrant and opponent couldn't beat it. I'll be back for the third match. Let's see if we can end two and one. All right, getting into it. It's funny that when opponent played Island, I was feeling pretty bad about that match, but they only had a couple counters even post-board. Okay, even I can recognize that this hand isn't good enough. <laughs> uh, we're hoping for a blue to cast this stupid divination, but we can dig for it while keeping ourselves alive. That also digs for it. God, this card is so good. Being able to cast it off of Overgrown Tomb is insane. Black doesn't get cards like this. Opponent unlikely to be able to counter this unless they had main deck spell pierce. Huh. We want that eventually, but I think we're really digging for a blue land specifically. Okay, that, that works if we ever draw a third land. But we have cards that dig us towards third land. Okay, blue red again. Probably the same deck, the blue red phoenix deck. Revitalize, come on, the sea land. Well, that's awful. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hopefully opponent will spin their wheels for a bit. Or not. Okay, Sun Petal Grove. Radical idea, sure. It is funny that Enigma Drake is like not really a combo with jumpstart cards. Yeah, like this just shrinks it back down. It looks like opponent might be flooded a bit. Yeah, I'm here. Yep. Take four down to 16. I'm just gonna main phase, get rid of this. Uh, slows them way down, makes sure they can't possibly have a counter for it. Just keep hitting our land drops. This game could go either way. If they draw some threats and just smash us real fast, we will lose the game, because don't have a lot of great tools to deal with that. But if they're just attacking us with Goblin Electromancer and casting cantrips, uh, I think we'll actually be in okay shape. We've got five cards in the yard, so we're close to flipping Search for Azkanta. That's pretty nice. This card is interesting in this deck, because if you can activate it, it's like, this is one of the best decks ever to be digging into your deck with Azkanta the Sunken Ruin, but usually your your main problem is buying enough time to get your combo off, and this card does not help you do that. It's kind of true of all three of these. Opponent, maybe thinking about leaving a counter up or casting another threat. I would prefer they left a counter up because we don't have any cards that do anything right now.
if they don't do anything, I will probably just main phase the divination, hope to hit a blue source for search for Azkanta. Maybe look to instant speed chemistry's insight later. I want it deep in the tank though. These it was funny. When I played against Ali at the open, his deck looked a little different. The core was the same, but a lot of the card choices were different. And at one point, when I was just beating him down with Explore Creatures, he just said, Man, maybe I should just play a pile of Revitalize. And his teammates looked at him and they were like, What the hell is Revitalize? Because no one knew what this card did. And he just said, It's two mana, you gain some life, and it cantrips. And they're like, Oh, so it's draw four with Lich's Mastery out? He's like, Yeah. And uh, it was funny that he then went on to win a tournament using that technology that he thought of. So... Oh man. There are a lot of times in Magic when it would be really nice to see the future, but I think the most useful one would be knowing exactly how long your opponent is going to take, so I know whether to cut the tape or try to fill the dead air. Okay. Uh, opponent just timed out there. Maybe they had an urgent emergency. We did not draw the cards we wanted to, but that's fine. See if our opponent... They time out again, we win, which is nice, I guess. But it'd be more interesting to play out the match again. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and cut, and I'll come back to let you guys know what happens. Alright, opponent timed out. But what the hell, we'll play one more match, because this deck is worth seeing three full matches with it. Alright, getting into it. I want it on the record that if we lose, I sacrificed a beautiful winning record with this deck for you viewers at home. It was all for you. Hmm. We have a lot of black sources, and if we find one, this hand just kind of works. I think I'm going to keep this on the back of almost any land lets us cast Discovery, and we have a bunch of looks at it. And even if we miss, we have our best cards for catching up, plus something to buy us time. This is a bit of a shady keep, but I like it more than the stupid hands with a bunch of Lich's Masteries and stuff like that. It's really funny, so... Normally in decks like this, one of the first things you do when you're trying to play 5 color or even 4 color is you try to cut down the number of double mana symbol cards as low as possible. Uh, that just makes you much better at casting your spells. Something like this is your best friend because even when your mana isn't really working, you can still cast it. But Gift of Paradise does weird things to that idea with your mana base. So you end up playing a bunch of double symbol cards because they're actually not that difficult to cast. And of course, Braska's Contempt, not even the most restrictive black card in our deck since we're playing Lich's Mastery, so uh, not that difficult to cast this one. Hmm. Are there any colors this deck doesn't need? Because you need red, white, black, no, you, the only color you could cut is green from the central combo, and even then you couldn't cut it from the combo because of nature's spiral. Wow. It hadn't occurred to me that just the combo part of this deck uses all five colors. So, yeah. <laughs> it's ambitious, to say the least. Am I going to win another match by timeout? Come on, opponent. Just keep your seven. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. Oh boy. Well, we'll see what happens. Okay. Another opponent just timed out against us. I don't know what's happening, but 
I'll take my wins where I can get them, but that doesn't make very good content. So we're going to try one more time. Okay. If this opponent times out, then I'm sorry. You guys get two real matches and whatever these have been. But maybe it adds up to real matches eventually. Hey, this is like really close to that hand I just had. Uh, we don't have as many of our good reactive cards, but we have better mana to start. Earlier I complained about being on the draw all the time, but this hand would really like to be on the draw. We don't even know what we're looking for. Is this going to be blue-red again? Okay. Uh, I'm just going to play this for now. If we don't have to cantrip with Revitalize, that would be great. We don't really want to burn this before we have Lich's Mastery going, but we will if we have to. Alright, Electromancer's fine. Yeah, I'm just going to keep playing cards. Not being able to cast uh, Chemister's Insight kind of sucks, but that's fine. Damage. Chart of course. Yep, sure, they're up a card. That is really good when it only costs one. Be gone, Scorpion. Radical idea, sure. I want to just spin in their wheels for the minute. This isn't going to kill us that fast, so... I'm going to go ahead and burn this now. I think we want to get something going. And... Yeah, okay. I'm actually going to do something a little weird. I'm going to main phase this to see if we find, like, uh, I guess even a hinterland harbor wouldn't enter tapped here, but I wanted to see if we could find a blue land to get that going. Notably, we are three colored sources away from casting Explosion, so that's a little rough, but... Hopefully, opponent will... Play an Enigma Drake here, and we can just Cleansing Nova and reset the board and take our time some more. His hand is kinda shaped up. We drew a bunch of lands. Yeah, Enigma Drake, that's what I wanted to see. Now hopefully they just don't have Spell Pierce or Negate in their main deck. No. Oh. Well, they're up a lot of cards, so they will probably be able to put another threat down. But we can always hope not. Alright, Overgrown Tomb, you are the least helpful card in our deck, because you do not cast these cards, and you are not a real card. Yep, Crackling Drake is a beating, how that card always is. I'm gonna go ahead and do this main phase. Yeah. Opponent's deck has very few threats in it. They have, like... Depending on what they're doing, they might have like 16, with Goblin Electromancer, the Enigma Drakes, Crackling Drake, and maybe the Phoenix. Isolated Chapel, uh, still not exactly what we are looking for. Holy crap. We don't have that many blue sources, but not seeing one or, uh, or a Gift of Paradise is kind of unlucky. Sure, shrinks their Drake, which I'm fine with. Would really love to find, like, an island here. Hell, even just a Lich's Mastery. We could start doing some stuff. Take an extra turn, hope to find a life gain card. We've got some time. Not a lot of time. One of the cool things is how Lich's Mastery is a sort of reset button. Because even if they get us to two... One thing that's unintuitive is Lich's Mastery doesn't stop you from losing life or anything like that. It just makes your life total completely irrelevant. Okay. So let's go ahead. Definitely going to my library. The question is, do I look for Lich's Mastery or do I look for... Oh, opponent might actually have main deck counters this time. That would be rough for us. I think I just look for a Hinterland Harbor if this resolves. Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get our blue land. <laughs> then we can... Is there a reason to do this main phase or not main phase? 
I don't think opponent has counters in their deck. Just it just doesn't seem like it to me. Okay. What I was hoping is we might disincentivize them from doing something like this by leaving up mana, because it might look like we got settled the wreckage. Well, I guess it was clear that we got into Land Harbor, but they might think we have settle or something like that. Sure. This is really good for them. That is the third cheap divination that they've cast. Oh, I should have responded to that with Chemistry's Insight. Make sure that they couldn't counter it. Oh, couldn't anyway. All right. Okay. We've had some mediocre draws. So let's see. Four. We have eight mana. Can play a land and go up to nine. What is that enough to do? We could Mirari for... Vraska's Contempt, get rid of this Enigma Drake, buy ourselves a lot of time. We can't Gift of Paradise if we do that, but I think that's fine. Uh, is this leaving up double black? It is. Next turn we can continue hitting our land drops, get some extra mana, draw some cards. Keep hoping that the opponent just doesn't have quite enough threats to finish us off while we're buying time. Hell, if they play some drakes, this gets back Cleansing Nova next turn. So. Yep. Sure. I think we're definitely getting back Cleansing Nova. Can't afford to let them untap with that. Hopefully they don't realize what's about to happen and play out another drake. Opt, sure. It's kind of dangerous to be doing this now, like unless they have a counter that they are looking for, because they really want to leave as many spells in hand as possible to buy back this Phoenix if it dies. Yeah, like, I don't know if they throw away some bad cards and then draw land here, they might not be able to find enough spells. Okay. Well, that makes them wish they had done all this pre-combat, because they would have just killed me, <laughs> but... Let's go ahead and get this Cleansing Nova. Huh. I should have counted. Oh, we could have gone off with Lich's Mastery. That was really bad. Well. Hmm. Okay. So, that is a mistake, but we can't let it uh, stop us. Wait. Okay, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can actually cast Gift of Paradise again. Go ahead and cast it on this Overgrown Tomb. Resolve, gain some life. I'm spewing gain life cards here, even though they would be really good with, uh, with Lich's Mastery, because I don't want to die to this Maximize Velocity on another Crackling Drake. They would need a bunch of instant speed threats here to kill us. Yep, sure. Okay, there's one. Let's see if they can do two more to hit us with the Phoenix. They need three more to kill us. Four more, actually. It's not really possible, because if they maximize velocity on this Drake, then they are not... Uh, yep, okay. That's... Uh, actually, I think we are dead now, because they found the other phoenix. Yeah, okay. This was completely my mistake. Um, I threw this game away because I didn't count. We could have, uh... Wait. No, if this had gotten back, uh... I'm lying. If we had gotten back Mastermind's Acquisition, we didn't have enough mana to Mastermind and Lich's Mastery and Chance for Glory. That's... 13 mana, that's way too much. Uh, we barely had 11. Okay, this is why opponent's deck is good. They're threat light, but these kept coming back, and they kept finding their drakes. It's unfortunate, but whatever. Do we bring in duresses? I didn't last time because I'm dumb, but I think you do. Let's cut the random dirtily card draw that doesn't really do anything. And then cut some Cleansing Novas, like we did last time. 
think I like this. We have our big unbeatable threat. We can strip counters to make sure our interaction actually works. And we're still the sweet combo deck. Okay. Yeah, so. I didn't screw that game up, but what I did screw up was not counting. I should have counted, uh, to be sure, either way. The problem with how this deck works is you often have a lot of very fast turns, and then you take a lot of time all at once, which is fine if you're playing on Magic Online, but is very bad uh, for Magic Arena, where your time is limited if you try to take all your time at one turn. Sure. Discovery fixes any hand, and if we find a green land, we're kind of off to the races, so... Let's find a green source, shall we? Woodland Cemetery would be preferable, I guess. Sure, opt. Interesting that opponent appears to be playing the full six, uh, or full 16 creatures. Uh, four of both Drake's Goblin Electromancer and uh, White land we'll need eventually, but really we're looking for green, because that will fix all of our colors. This is great, though. Oh, but yeah, then they have Electromancer and also the Phoenixes. Means that they might not draw enough spells sometimes. Temple Garden is perfect. Hopefully they just play a bunch of Electromancers so we can win with a Car Carnage Tyrant again. No Drake. Discovery. Huh. The opponent really should be doing these things pre-combat. If they bin a Phoenix here and can cast two more spells, they could have reanimated it this turn, and that is, like, not that hard with a Goblin Electromancer out. Okay. Hell, even that, like, if it drew them into a phoenix, it would have been great. Let's see. Wait. Yeah. One of the rare occasions where the auto-tapper is bad, because we want it to tap the better land to leave up the worse one, so we can gift a paradise. And... Hmm. We're probably going to be revitalizing anyway because we want to guarantee we hit 6th land for Carney T, but there's no reason to wait for our opponent's turn, so we'll just do it here. The reason that this deck is so good is I refer to our opponents spinning their wheels, and that is what's happening. They weren't advancing their board much, they were just casting cantrips, but that's good in this deck, because all those cantrips add up to making your Enigma Drakes better. So, we're going to play this big, nasty dinosaur, and we're going to see what that does for this game. Onus is now on the opponent. They need to kill us very quickly, or our dinosaur is going to kill them. Which, they can do it with Enigma Drake, but... Attack in with this, next turn play another one, the following turn, maybe Hail, Ma Hail Mary Lich's Mastery, and exile all our permanents and cards in hand to stay alive. Hope the dinosaurs can do it. Playing against this deck can be a little nerve-wracking, because, oh god, they're going to maximize velocity, hit us for 10. That's very bad. No. Just going to hit us for a little extra damage? That's weird. No. Why did they shock this in, then? That's weird. Oh well. Let's see. How many spells do they need to kill us? If... They need to make these 8-8s, eight which is, like, not that hard. They need to cast four spells. This makes them cast two additional spells. Puts them up to six. That's a little harder. I don't know if we're winning the game if we Gift of Paradise, though. Hmm. So, this is tough. I think I'm going to... Going to Discovery first. Getting out of the Carnage Tyrant plan. Well, that is just great. 
That is exactly what we want. Just hope that they don't have a counter. I think our best chance is hoping that they don't have a counter. I don't know that we can really beat a counter anyway. Also, opponent is losing the game to this Carnage Tyrant very quickly, so they are incentivized to cast a million spells on their turn, like pre-combat and then hit us, in which case Settle is going to get them real good. We can basically just take any non-lethal damage here. It's funny, this card makes the math really awkward because it shrinks Enigma Drake when you flash it back, but not Crackling Drake. Alright. Opponent tapping out of their red mana, or blue mana, very quickly. If they cast one more cantrip, we basically just win the game with Settle the Wreckage. Huh, that's another thing that changes the math. They just have like a shock for us here and then a disdainful stroke. We lose, but that is fine. Couldn't really beat that anyway. Yep, sure. All right, opponent, you cast three spells this turn. Let's see if you have the disdainful stroke. Highlighting their hand, looks like they have it. Yep, okay, there was no way we were beating that. Opponent's draw was very good, and our deck did the part where it didn't do anything. So, if you're just counting matches one, we went three and two. If you just count the matches you see, we went one and two. I think we were probably going to win that game when the opponent timed out, but whatever. So, deck was not incredible, but... We hit opponents with counter spells, which I mentioned were the bad matchups. We didn't play against any green black, and we played against blue red three times. I don't think that's exactly uh, indicative of how the format is. Anyway, the deck was sweet, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, I would love it if you could subscribe to the channel. It both helps you see the content and helps other people see it. That's all I got for today. Thank you and goodbye.